Okay. Wild Hunt. Wild Hunt is good. That's a good movie. <laughs> If Maya it's says a good, it's probably not good. Me. It's a good it's movie. Not, <laughs> yeah, it's probably not good if Maya says it's good. Just watch I'm it. Tell just you, watch it. Every watch movie it. they have recommended that I've watched has not been good. To you. That's what. That's what. To that's, you. That's, that's all it is. You recommended to you recommended to me to enjoy, and I don't. But you ask. <laughs> why do you ask? You keep asking. Well, all of them, everybody keeps asking me what movies you like. Donald. I never asked you. Okay. <laughs> Donald keeps <laughs> asking. I do ask because I always like new perspectives from people, but right now I'm telling you too. Yeah. So, so, so you text every three days, ask what movie we like. I yeah. told, I said, stop texting him back. Stop texting him back. He, <laughs> no, no more. And so fine. We give you a movie and you just. I liked oh, Hell right. House. Hell House was entertaining. That was a good scary movie. Mm. You like <laughs> junk food. <laughs> y'all, y'all just like arty stuff just because it's arty. But if I can feel you being arty and weird while I watch the movie, it's no longer good art. It's just yeah. art and it's weird. It's just forced just weird sake. Yeah. yeah. What movie was forced? Uh, Mandy. Or you didn't Mandy like- oh, you liked Mandy? No. <laughs> They oh loved it God. though. Oh, I'm really trash. <laughs> it had I, beautiful visuals. I don't care. That doesn't, yeah, that's like that was like a fever dream. That movie. That movie was. It was a fever crazy. nobody wanted. See, you nobody to, wants a fever. You need to start smoking weed, Tony Baker. That's why you didn't like the movie. If you have this to smoke, is a smoking weed, movie, it's not good. Sober, that's I'm half of the music I listen. See, that's the problem. No, the problem is you got to be on something to enjoy. Yeah, it's not good. Exactly. It's, it's psychedelic good. horror. Psychedelic horror. This is why I'm not, I'm not, no, no, no. <laughs> I show you, so it's like, it's like that little meme where that guy's, that little animal shows you the thing he liked and then you reject it. And so the little animal's like this. That's me right now. <laughs> no, if you got to be hopped up. Like if I want to have fun with my friends and I got to be on drugs to do it, then my friends are boring. It's <laughs> just, just a whack situation. That's, that's what it is, man. Once you get all them disclaimers going, you just got to be high on the perfect psychedelic. Yeah, it's not the good. Movie, and it's a wag movie. <laughs> man, that, a lot of our listeners are like that. A lot of our listeners are saving their joint for the right podcast, and they chose ours. And I was no, so touched by good, that. Stuff should be good, though. But stuff should be good regardless. And then if you're on something, it should be even better. It's right. It shouldn't be just you have to be on something just for it to be good. It should be good by itself. Like, if a movie's funny, it should be funny. Now, if I get high, then it's going to be even funnier. Right. But it was funny anyways. But you're saying it's trash, but if it's you get not high, trash. it'll be mediocre. Mandy is not trash. Mandy is just, it's just different. It's just I got, different. I got two guys saying otherwise. It's two to one right now. Well, oh, I'll, find, I'll invite someone else, and then they'll say something else. And then he'll invite someone else, and they'll say something else. And we'll just keep going and going and going forever. <laughs> we'll take 30 sober people and have them watch it, and let's see what their reviews are. Please, yeah, please. Just because they're sober doesn't mean that they're correct. I'll take 30 does. drunk people. They like people. everything. Drunk and high people like everything. But I, eat, I eat Jack in a Box when I'm drunk and or high and it's delicious. Sober, I'd be like, what is this shit? <laughs> Jack in the Box is good when you're sober, when you're drunk and high? No, it's Yes, not. that's the only reason why it's in business. Same with Denny's. We, people only go to Denny's because it's like, I'm drunk as hell and it's 3 a.m. What's open? Okay. Denny's we're never going to agree. Yeah, Denny's, Denny's is desperate, desperate measures. And it has been since we were kids. Like it's open. We were 18. It's, it's open. the only thing that's open. Be like, All right, <laughs> Denny's it is. But nobody's passionately looking for no. Denny's. No, nope, never. During no one day. wakes up on a Sunday morning and is like, you know what I can go for? A grand slam. That, that's right. not what happens. No. But it, it comes through in the cloud. But I will say this, though. Welcome back to another episode of Daddy Issues. We are back, as you can see, in mid-argument. Um, we're still fathers. We got yes. Doc Brown back in the building. What's up, y'all? What's up? What's happening, man? How you been? Uh, hanging and surviving, man. You know? Uh, I saw my the other day, man. I caught that Rona, so... Uh, you did? I, I did. It got me Oh, last week. snap. Yep. Wow. So Got immediately I have to ask, how are you feeling now? <laughs> a lot better. I'm probably like 95%. So bless. So you're fine. Yeah. So yeah, you felt week, it. I felt it. Every piece. Yep. Got me. 
Got what, what, what did you what did you go through having it? So the first day, it was last Tuesday. Um, I woke up out of sleep, probably like 1 a.m., body aches, sweating, couldn't go back to sleep, and I had to work the next day. So I had to do telemedicine on Tuesday. So I worked that whole day and fought through it. But then um, I took my temperature and I had 101 fever and um, took Tylenol, didn't really bring it down. Then headache came, then cough, nasal congestion, and it was just terrible and couldn't move from the couch. And I felt like that for like two or three days. Um, I got a test on Wednesday, the day after, like, like willed myself to the hospital, got a COVID test, waited on the results and then it came back positive. So all I was really doing is trying to keep down fluids and taking Tylenol and eventually it broke after about three or four days. But those three or four days were the worst. Wow. Yeah. You, but you're you, alive. You, alive. You out in the community? So I actually caught it on that weekend, Saturday. I went to an event and it was the first event I ever went to and they got in. So, yeah. So I ain't gonna lie. It was my fault. Was you out? Did you have a mask or anything? You was out there raw? I had my mask, but yeah, for those instances where I didn't have it on and I was around people. So lesson learned. It got me. Right. And people at that party, I actually found out later, were actually sick before the party. And oh, that was cold I, pieces for that. Yeah. This is if this is knew. why I'm scared to, to hit the streets again on the on the comedy tip because because, you know, we at risk as comedians. We just be out there uh, in, in public all the time. We have yeah. to be. So when they be like, you want to come do a show? I'll be like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not uh, worth it, man. It, and I see, mean, I feel he, the he complete really? opposite. He is here and he is fine. <laughs> no, <laughs> but I, I don't want to go through that. I don't want none of that. I don't want no three that. or four days. But everybody's thing isn't being sick. Everybody's panicking. You can die, and I'm like, yo. Oh yeah. Well, some people you can, can die. You, yeah. but some people can die from driving. Some people can. It's but a that, thousand ways to die, and people only, people have gotten to the point where they act like this is the only way you can die. Now. Driving is not microscopic, though. That's the thing. I know, but are you going to stop driving your car because it's a possibility that you can die? If I know that people drive super reckless and crazy. They do. And I would stop driving. But no, so I mean like I mean like I mean like Bangladesh crazy. Bangladesh, I would never drive in <laughs> because of the way they drive. So if if it's that type of scenario, then yes. But out here they don't drive crazy enough for me to be like, I'm never driving again. Cause like somebody hit me the other day, because I, I put a post about wearing your mask. I was like, even if you don't like it, just wear it, it's not a big deal. Cause like every store you've ever been to in your life, it says no shoes, no service, you know. No shirt, no service. And people don't care. They say, put on a mask and everybody flips out. I'm like, if that's the store requires, just do it. It's not a big deal. And somebody was like, you have way too nonchalant about it. You can die. And I was like, I can die from a lot of things. I'm not going to stop driving a car because I can die in a car accident. I'm not, there's so many ways to die. Respecting something and knowing it's real and living in fear is two completely different things. I don't live in fear. I live in caution. Yeah, and, and that's that, even that's fair. But people are flat out like, I, "We're gonna all die," and it's like, "No, no, we're not." Like, it sounds annoying as hell. And I've heard other people who had, it and they said it wasn't that bad. I'm sorry that Docs was bad. Uh, but the first thing that people go, "You can die." I'm like, "Shut, shut your ass up!" Like, Doc, Doc being here and people I've talked to, honestly, just makes me more comfortable. Just, just like, I mean, just yeah. make sure. I mean, it's just make sure to keep mitigating your risk. You mean you're yeah. at least you're a person that wears masks, and you know, you yeah, I wear my mask. Like, I, find them mask annoying. I find yeah. them so annoying, but I'm like, hey, man, what's what's the big deal? Have you talked to anybody that has lost somebody to COVID though? No, nobody. Everybody has beaten it. Yeah, but no. now it's like I I feel like you got to do both sides before you just completely believe. Everybody I talk to live, but talk to the people that lost somebody. I know one one girl said sides. she had a friend. She, she's because she's the lady said I have a friend who thought like you and he died. And I'm like, well, yeah, there's a poss- people can die. I'm still not going to live in fear. I know that's a possibility. I'm not stupid enough to think no, that's impossible. That's a possibility, but I'm still not going to live in fear. I'm just not built to live in fear. Like it's just that's just I don't know. I can't. I and the percentages that. are still small. 
I respect that, but to, with Tony's dizzy spells, I think his caution, it might be warranted. Until we figure out what the yeah. dizzy spells are and what he can do about them, that's a pre-existing condition. Is that correct, Doc, that Tony yeah. may, should be more cautious than others? I mean, anyone with any pre-existing condition, yes. Yeah. I mean, they should be more cautious. I have asthma, so I have asthma at baseline. So, I mean, me testing it was already a big risk, and then I paid the price for it. And then I was even more cautious as far as my recovery. I haven't left my apartment since testing positive. So I've been here for, since last yeah. Wednesday. And he, yeah, and that's responsible. So, yeah. I mean, he was like, uh, I got it. I'm not going to go out. But yeah, but anyone with pre-existing conditions definitely should be definitely on high alert and do yeah. everything they need to do. And I get that. And I respect that. It's just the, the flat out fear. You can die. I'm just so sick of hearing that. I'm just, you can die. I know. I yeah. know. But unfortunately, we live in a society where people don't listen and they don't know and they do stupid things like me, but day to day don't even use masks, don't even do any of these other things. And it's like, you have to keep drilling this message like, hey, this can happen. It's a possibility. The risk might be low compared to other people based on your age and demographics, unfortunately, and other things, but it can still happen. So. But even I don't see anything my, wrong with people yeah, saying it. Even with, in my non-fear, though, I still respect the rules for other people. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm still, even if I'm not freaking out, I'm like, but let me do my part to not freak anybody else out. I can see that. I don't, I don't really see that many people freaking out. Though. Oh, I, well, you I know, know I'll be on. Saying. Yeah, but man. I don't know anybody personally, though. Like, like I don't see it, you know, the, the media is going to show you what the media is going to No, I, be, I see it all on, on the social media. In the, in the arguments and all that. That's where I see it. Oh, in the comment section? Yeah. The comment my, section, you can see any slice of life of yeah. anything, of any and, and In my immediate circle, yeah. everybody is like me. They're just like, no, because I've been hanging out with family a lot, but it's just been family. Um, like the last three weekends, I went to my brother's house uh, two weekends ago. I went to Keith's house this weekend, dropping the kids off with my mom. Like me, I've been kicking with the family heavy. Outside of that, it's been real light. I actually know a lot of people, unfortunately, who are, I've spoken to personally, who are very scared of this. And these are young, fit people. They watch maybe too much news and they say, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go out. I'm not going to go back to my job. I'm not going to continue my normal activities. No pre-existing conditions. Not, I mean. Yeah, see, like, that's when I'd be like, oh, God. But if that's you want to do, that's fine. Just don't. I guess my issue comes when it's like, you come to me like, but you can die. If that's how you want to live. That's fine. You freak out and stay in your house in the closet under the bed. That's fine. I I just I can't. We had this I've discussion. Been, Wait, I'm sorry. Just uh, off, Tony. Oh, uh, I've been out. Uh, like I, I've been I've been to the gym, my walks, uh, the store. Other than that, anything that's not like you know. Anything that can be avoided, I will. Like doing this at the house, uh, I'll do it at the house. Or like, you know, anything like that. As far as me like being scared to leave the house, I, I've been leaving the house the whole time. Going to the store, going for my walks. So it's like, a, with not being out there in the community, because I know, I know before this all shut the world down, I know I came into contact with COVID. I had to. Yeah, all the meet and greets we were doing and like live shows. I'm dapping people up after the show and selling merch. I had to have come in contact with it. Probably had it and didn't even know it, you know. But uh, it's funny, like when it comes to me and like diseases and like, you know, stuff like that, I'd be like shook, but not that shook. Like I remember <laughs> when, uh, you know, HIV been here and I, you know, I was, I was scared of it, but still smash raw. So like, <laughs> yeah, really, yeah. Not really that scared, you know. Yeah. You, you take the precautions, you thinking about it, but it's like you know, it's like after the fact, like man, what if? Oh, it's the after. But I already did, you know. What I mean? Definitely the after. <laughs> that was me every every time I went raw. Immediately after the the, the finish, I'd be like, oh god, man, every oh, time. God. It's like. <laughs> So it's not a true fear, but it's like it's in the, yeah. it's in the back of my mind. Like, what if? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's not a true fear. No, I always got the what if. No, I, that's what I'm saying. I'm not really truly yeah. scared of of stuff like that. I mean, it's a legit it's, fear, but sometimes you know, right? Else, we just be like, yeah, it takes it precedence. In the moment, the night, you know, it was it was hot and heavy. 
<laughs> I ran into a lady who was, uh, remember that we talked about vaccines a couple months ago? Like, would you take a COVID vaccine? Because they're, mm. they're coming out that they're starting to test on people. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. And you, that's what you said before. That's what you said before. No. Dr. Donald, would you take the COVID vaccine they got coming out in the next I'd few have, months? I'd have to wait. I'd have to wait. I wouldn't. Um, the only reason is I don't want to be any phase one, any type of trial for any vaccine. And unfortunately, people in our communities, we've been in that situation a lot of times involuntarily, and we've had negative effects and PTSD from those things. So it's understandable to not want to do those things. And I agree. I'm going to wait and wait for the results and go from there. I don't want to be first in line for that. That's what I was thinking. And then she said, she just mentioned, she's like, can you believe that 30% of the population won't take this vaccine? And I was like, oh. Surprise is that high. <laughs> I mean, that low. I mean. You think so? That's yeah, a low I mean, number. I, I, I thought it would be more. Like with what we know now, especially, I, like I feel, I noticed, and this is not even me being ridiculous. I noticed when it comes to the vaccine, it'd be white people really pushing it. And we'd be like, nah, we got too much history with this shit. We good. Yeah. Like, and they'd be like, just, just let them. I'm like, and why don't they don't go test it on y'all? They always go to our shit and test it. I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> All the time. All the exactly. time. I'm not doing that. Nope. Not, I'm not trusting it whatsoever. I'll, nope. I'll take my chance. <laughs> yeah, I'll, 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 I'll take my Tylenol and my fluids. And, yep. and, and I know. I'll, I'll go through it. It sounds like hell. I'm not dismissing, you know, what you want. Okay. But I'd, I'd rather go through that and be some goddamn test dummy. Yeah, unfortunately, they got, they got to look at the history of vaccines and like, you know, especially with black folks. Yeah. Once, once I read about the Tuskegee experiment, I was like, hell no, never again. <laughs> never. I'm not against vaccines. It's just no. first, never. Nope. Because nope. I remember we all had to take them growing up, the mumps, yeah. the rubella, the, the all of that. And like, I, I feel like, did I get the mumps vaccine? Because I had the mumps and I remember having it. And I was like, man, it was it was hell. I remember that. That was Did y'all mess up. It was pain. My, my glands was swollen right here. It was like I was like, and I was like in elementary school at the time. And my boy Leon, he had at the same time I did. He was outside. <laughs> I, I remember. I remember laying on the couch. I was like, hey, Leon. And he was at the door. <laughs> He's like, Can Anthony, come out. And I was like, ah, you outside. <laughs> and I saw his. He had the swollen glands too. I was like, Leon. Wow, I couldn't even get off the couch. But, uh, but they had a vaccine for mumps. But I was wondering, like, did I have the vaccine, or did they start that after, after I had it? Because this was like the eighties or whatever. And, and I was probably like in good. third, fourth, third, fourth, or fifth grade. It was somewhere in that window when I had it. I don't even remember. I think it was before. Man, it was rough. I was like, ooh. Like they be pushing, somebody got mad at me because I said I've never had a flu shot and I don't give my kids a flu shot. I don't give flu shots either. And they was like, how could you? I was like, and I've also never had the flu. And my mama, who's, I know better than you, some random lady on the internet has never had the flu shot. She got it. And the first year she got the flu shot, she caught the damn flu. And I was I like, trust no. The flu shot. no. It's always a I risk. Trust. I remember the year risk. they gave out the wrong shot. <laughs> I, like, it was like a couple years ago. They gave out the wrong. It wasn't even for the right strand. Some people just getting shots. Everybody's catching flu. No, find another guinea pig. No. Yeah, I never. Uh, knock on wood. I never had the flu, uh, and I never got the shot. Maybe oh, lucky! Y'all both never had the flu ever. No. Well, you I, never. Maybe I've had it before. Yeah, if I did, like, I didn't like, know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but like you know, to, to say that man, I had the flu, the, the, I, I can't say. The last time I felt feverishly ill, where it was like fever and all of that, was when I had the mumps in elementary school. Yeah. Wow. The last time well, I, I You know, I've had colds since then, but nothing yeah. where I was just like down for the count, like you, you know what I mean? I can't think of the last time I was sick for longer than like 24 hours. Or like where, it's, where I really like, I'm talking about fever, throwing up, like yeah. I mean, even, even stuff that's lasted longer than 24 hours, it'd be like a head cold. And I know what a head cold is, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I think the flu is just like, all right, fluids, take a little something to relieve this pressure. And then even that's like two days. But I've never, the last time I was out of commission for a week is when I had chicken pox and I was like seven. Dang. And that was only just because you can't spread it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. other than that, 
Just a quick uh, internet search says the MMR vaccine was uh, generalized, generally used in the United Kingdom starting in 88. Um, oh. So maybe you just missed it. I think I missed it because I definitely had it. I remember when it started, that was, uh, my, I used to go to my dad's house every weekend. And so like that morning, Monday morning, when he was about to take me back to my mom's, I was like, oh, I feel hot. I don't feel good. And my stepmom took my temperature. Oh, you got it. You run it hot. And I was like, oh, yeah. And then <laughs> when I went home, everything got worse. And when you have the mumps, it swells so much in here that when you chew, it hurts. So it was just like, oh, I was like, oh. And I just remember laying on the couch, seeing like, you know, stuff growing in the wall. I don't know where the hallucinations was coming from. I don't know if that was part of the fever package or whatever, but I was like, what am I looking at? <laughs> and I was out of here. And I was just like, this sucks. And so, uh, but that was the last time I was really like ill like that. Uh, yeah, I guess that's because they didn't have a vaccine at the time. Yeah. I think it might have been out. I think the vaccine might have been out, but it wasn't just required for everybody. Like now everybody mm -hmm. has to get the mumps vaccine, the MMR vaccine before they go to school. Yeah, yeah but some, some parents are, you know, rejecting the vaccine, all vaccines. So there's been a spike in like measles and mumps and stuff mm -hmm. in certain populations, unfortunately. My kids got those, those initial vaccines that they had to get for school. My kids got all of those. Yeah. Um, but the Who's flu printing? shot, I haven't taken the boards. Who's printing? Is somebody oh, printing? Sabrina. Sabrina. Oh. I was like, why is it so right, so <laughs> I'll, tell, I'll tell Sincere to look out for printing noises. <laughs> yeah. Because he, he edits the podcast now. Ask him, uh, I don't know, has he had the flu? <laughs> <laughs> Messages to the editor. Right. You know what? You know what? I, 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 you know, I see other people say it too, but I'd be thinking about it like, if the vaccines work, why are the people who vaccinate their kids worry about the ones who don't? Some kids get like cancer and they're under chemo, so they can't, um, they don't have vac uh, they can't get the vaccinations or Are kids under somewhere. chemo going to school like that? Or they're recovering. Again. Yeah. There's a, there's a small percentage of kids who can't quite get the vaccine. So that's where this is all coming from. Yeah, some people are more immunocompromised than others. And especially when they have certain conditions like the flu, you know automatically drops your immune system. Any kind of chronic illness does that. So you really want to protect yourself, but everybody around you. So that's really the point of vaccinations in general. So that's why they require it at schools because it's not just you, you're just infecting everyone else or increasing the risk of that. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. If you, but if you had it, you should be fine. Right. But unless in theory, like, do, they, do they work? Yeah. That's what I'm So why would you be work? Like if I have, you know what I'm saying? Uh, a bulletproof vest and somebody shoots me from far distance with a, I should be fine. That's why I'm wearing this. So, I mean, invasive vaccinations are just inactivated forms of the virus and it's put in use to your body makes antibodies to destroy that virus. So it could work for that strain, but say another strain comes about that doesn't match that vest and different type of bullet and it still hurt you and could still potentially hurt other people. So that's why the vaccinations usually change every year to match these strains. So it's a lot of times it's just guess and check, unfortunately. And that, that'd be my issue, yeah. like the guess and check. And it goes back to, again, black people. I just be like, what are y'all putting in us, man? Yeah. It's a lack of trust. Like if I, if I trusted yeah. the government, if I trusted the government, I would have no issue getting the vaccine. Zero. Because I respect, you know, what it's all about, like that, like, you know, protecting others, like, because the one thing I can't stand is like an ignorant person that's defiant, and then they get other people sick because yeah. of their bullshit, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But like, uh, but the, it's just the government. It's like, I don't know, you know what I mean? And then it, it's hard for me to, to trust that, given the history yeah. of everything. Germ okay. warfare, smallpox blankets, and like, you know, I still think AIDS was made. Yeah. You know, and stuff like that. Taking Africa and giving the white homosexual males. I believe that actually happened. Ooh. So it's hard for me to just be like, hmm. Yeah, because I respect medicine. I respect <laughs> science. I respect all of it. Like, you know what I mean? But it's just that in the back of your mind, you're always like, but what are y'all doing? 
Mm-hmm. Like, what is this for? And you never be giving us like clear explanations like that. It's always like some. You know what I mean? I just be like, "What are y'all doing?" And not that I don't. They be asking it. stuff. They be asking yeah, stuff. They be asking the forms. Stuff. Like, what race are you? What race are you? I feel like they put us in the different. Oh, is your black key African Americans? Give me the African American dope. Yeah, you know, know. you know, it's just the questionnaires. I'll be like, "Why does this matter right now?" You I know don't know. What I mean? if it's it's for numbers. Numbers. Yeah. But I, I see it though. I mean, I get it. I get both sides of it. Like fifty fifty. Yeah. I don't have an answer for that. Again, with all that being said, I'm not an asshole enough. Like, if I was in your predicament and I did catch it, yes, I would stay inside. I'm not going to still be outside. Like, well, I got it, but why don't everybody else come (laughs) get it with me? Like, I know I'm going to stay inside and be mindful of the people. Yeah. Well, this, yeah, this early on, it could just be that they make a mistake. Usually vaccines take a long time to develop. And if they could just make a mistake trying to rush it out and it's nothing malicious, it's just like, get it out, get it out, get it out. We need this. We need this so we can open the schools in September. And then they rushed and they made a mistake. And the people who they tested it on are probably poor. Mm -hmm. Uh, They usually test on poor people. Those tend to be black people and brown people and poor white people who don't are not going to go hire a lawyer. And all these other things. So it's just. Uh, you see the treachery in yeah. that? That's what I'm talking about. Like, yeah. why Why the poor people first? And like, people yeah. that can't sue. And like, that right there is like. And to be honest, if there was way less money involved in medicine, I would trust it. I would be more on, on board too. Like, what? Bill Gates, you are not a doctor. <laughs> why are you so goddamn involved in these vaccines? Oh, because you're going to make a shitload of money off it. That, And that's where I'd be like. If they were just honestly trying to cure people from anything out of the kindness of their hearts, <laughs> I'm all for it. But the government and these big corporations, it's just about money. And, con- yep. and I'm like, no. I got to speak up for Bill Gates. I know everyone's going to come over in the comments. No, you're not. That's no. good. That's good. Go do your thing. But Bill Gates has done a lot for the third world with malaria vaccines and birth control. And I know a lot of people are saying it's population control. I read every conspiracy theory. I love all of them. But I think Bill Gates has really done a lot for the world. And this right now, maybe it's a bit shady. Maybe he's talking before things are developed yet. You know, maybe we should wait it out. But he really... He's not a bad guy, I think, as far as Bill the, the he was one of the first class. From, from what I remember, he was the first person saying that a pandemic was coming years ago. I bet he I knew. I years bet ago. he knew. I'm not He's really like, mistrustful yeah, of Bill Gates like they that. They cooking it up. And I got it. will be ready in a couple years. Yeah, and I'm yeah. coming out with the vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really... That's true. Yeah. He made a yeah. You're right. He had a whole team. Obama Task knew Force. all about this. They did. They did. But who you think told him? Bill Gates. We are overdue <laughs> for a big white house. The rug, the hand rub. Yeah. Bill Gates. We are overdue. Total. Bill Gates. I don't. I don't really look at Bill Gates as a nefarious cat. Like you know, I, I'm not really with all the pushing the vaccines, but I, I know his track record and stuff like that. And he's already so wealthy that. I don't see him being that desperate for money that he has to do all this extra shady stuff just to just to get more. He's already the richest man, or one of the richest men in the world. I never underestimate so, greed and power. But I, I don't know the way Some his people wealth be like, was you acquired. Can't have enough. It was just like his type of wealth didn't really come from like you know real estate or you know pushing people out of their homes. It it, it actually came from like computers. And everybody needing to use those computers. So it was just like, oh, I see why he's wealthy now. But if he had like a track record of like, you know, uh, pushing people out of whole neighborhoods so they can buy up all the land in that area, that's what I'm just like. Or they're in the, 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 the healthcare industry and they're getting people sick so they keep buying the medicine. That's what I'm looking at their track record like, this dude right here. But the way Bill Gates acquired his wealth is just a different lane that I don't see, you know, uh, the, the super nefariousness coming in. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. Definitely. Sabrina back in college? Is she printing out a report? <laughs> what is happening with this printer? She's, uh, <laughs> she's printing out uh, labels for her shipments. Of her oh, oh, that's a lot of things. I ain't mad at it. All right, that's cha-ching. That, that sounds like a lot of money. It's about yeah. money, yeah. <laughs> See how my whole attitude changed? I was like, what is she doing? Oh, money, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but actually, actually, no, it's her uh, cricket. 
uh, maker. So she got the cricket thing. That's how you make the little designs that you can put on, like the mugs and the, and the shirts that she does. So it's actually a cricket, not a printer. Uh, okay. Fire. That's what's up. Yeah. But still, she's making, you know, hey. It's get, get your money. Get yeah. your money. Print me up a I want to. I want to ask you this, Doc Brown. Did the COVID test hurt? Because I heard it was painful. Oh my god! So I had, uh, I had two parts. So they stick like a long Q-tip thing about this long up your nose till it hits the back, and then they use a different part and then stick it in the back of your throat. The whole oh, test is probably like a few know. seconds, but yeah, yeah it's, it's very uncomfortable. Up? No, I didn't. I, wouldn't, I didn't throw up. But I teared up though, like when they did the nose. Thing. Well, I think I think that's an involuntary response, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Help that. <laughs> I wasn't ready for it, but uh, yeah, uh, it lasts a couple seconds, but it's it's very uncomfortable. Because anything with the nose, you don't tear up because of pain, right? You just tear up because that's just like if you get hit in the nose, your eyes just start watering. Exactly. Yep. Uh, yeah, exactly. That don't sound fun though. Nah, don't. Yeah. This it's might necessary be though. It's. It's necessary. Uh, yeah, I mean, I get bad. it, and, I'm, and I was, I'm glad you stayed in, you know? <laughs> Wait a minute. This might be a conspiracy question, but if you got to go all the way to the back of your nose to get a sample of corona, is it as contagious as they're talking about? Yeah, it can be. So if time- you can't just go right here, then it would be, like, you know, easily spread Good by point. your... Thank you. Anytime you cough, sneeze, anything, you're expelling stuff from the nasopharynx and the oropharynx. So pharynx is just like your throat tube and it starts at the nose. So they're getting to the back of that and also getting back to the oropharynx. So anytime you cough or do anything like that, it's going to expel for it. But not what? just <laughs> regular, like not like uh, asymptomatic transmission because you have to be coughing it all from all the way back there. Well, I mean, it's not too far to cough. It's not a long yeah. distance anyway. So, you, I mean, yeah. I, I see what you're saying. Like, regular talking shouldn't, in theory, push it out. You should be able to get it right here if it's just living right here. But, no, nah, I can still do it. Once well, Doc what they've said been pharynx, is they I was sold on whatever he was saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, once he said pharynx, I was like, this guy knows what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> once he said pharynx, I was in. I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> Yeah, one big two goes all the way down. Starts with your nose. Uh, that sounds Miles terrible. Goes all the way down. Yep. Did you. your wife get tested as well? Yeah, she got tested. She got the home kit, so she's also positive. Um, she's doing mm-hmm. better as well. Her symptoms were a little bit different than mine. Um, Who was worse? Might be. It might have been her. Because oh, she wow. got like weird neurological <clears throat> symptoms. Like she got random mm. like shock like feelings in like her fingers and toes. And then she got like random like circles of like just weird feelings like in her legs. It was just something random. And you can see it. Um, we, she did a research and you can get weird neurological symptoms with COVID too. On top of having headaches, on top of having um, some fevers oh, and body nice. aches. So she had more wow. of the neurological stuff. That sounds compared sucky. To me. Yeah. But she's better, too. She's about 95% too. She still has a little headache. I still have a little headache. That's And I have a little cough. That's probably the most we have of the symptoms left. Can you run? Yeah, I can run. You can run? Mm-hmm. No, so there's no, like, long-term effects on your fitness? Well, I mean, I have a pulse ox machine at home, and it's normal. Pulse ox just tests your blood oxygen level. Um, and it's the same level as it was pre-COVID. Um, in theory, it can da- it can damage your lungs in certain individuals, less, especially me with asthma. But right now, I don't see any differences of the way I used to breathe compared to now. Okay. But it can. I was very lucky. I mean, being honest. Good to know. Yeah. Yeah, this shit's terrible. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. No, it sounds it sounds trash. <laughs> yeah. But, sounds trash. Yeah, it doesn't affect everyone. You know, like like Keon was saying, a lot of people will be asymptomatic. A lot of people, will, you know, won't feel it. But for those who do, you know, just give it time. Tylenol and time and water and fluid. And again, to anybody who's listening or watching, I respect all of this. I just don't live in fear. This is two different things. <laughs> yeah. And the respect is here. You know, I ain't going to be like, this is a fake. It is real. <laughs> I just am not afraid. Okay. Jeez Louise. 
Just mask up whenever you leave the another, house. Another thing up. that's scary, man, is that people don't know they have it, and they just be out here maskless, chopping it up, spitting on your eyeball when they talking. <laughs> and then they they don't think they have it because they feel normal, but their body was like, nah, it's in here. And then you just spit in somebody's eye crevice. Exactly. And then you just, you know, it's like, ah, that's what sucks. So yeah, a lot of people, you, you got to realize you're not out here sweaty and clammy and like, <laughs> You know, you out here with the fully realized COVID, thinking you normal. Exactly. Boom, you just spread it. Yep. That's why I just been hanging out with just just family, or alone. Like right now, the kids and Cotty, they still in the bay. I got a house to myself for the next three days. Chilling. What you gonna do? Right. You know what? Honestly, I didn't realize until they left. Just how. I, I just, last night I stayed up till three just cuz. <laughs> like, just cuz. I didn't have to get up for nobody. I didn't have to do nothing with nobody. I shot the show yesterday and I was just up. Just cuz. And I was like, and I'm gonna sleep in and I'm gonna wake up when I want to. Like, I just been chilling, just having my me time. Great. And I love it. <laughs> Any other future plans for these next couple of days? No, I'm chilling, catching up on my shows without being bad. Dad, can you come? Can you? I need you. Just chilling. You watch a rated R, everything. Huh? Everything. Cussing McGee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to watch a Cat Williams special just because. I just want to hear <laughs> Full blast. Full blast. <laughs> Cat Williams cusses so much. It's so <laughs> much. It's like every other word. I'd be like, bro. <laughs> Why? <laughs> we get it. <laughs> oh, oh, man. man. <laughs> we got funny. any questions, Mike? Well, before we go into questions, we did have one warning for everybody. A Canadian lab, Health Genetic Center, is under fire for errors in paternity tests. They have been operating for over a decade despite problems with their methods. That's Health Genetics Center, HGC. They offer prenatal DNA tests. And if you have used this company, double check the results. If you received a prenatal DNA test using the mother's blood and so just straight out of her veins, make sure that the work was not subcontracted out to HGC. Health Genetics Center. Wait, so paternity tests have been messed up? The paternity oh, right. test. Maternity test. Okay. Uh, paternity. Okay, so like people, like they've been saying that people are the fathers of the kids and they weren't? Uh, yeah, they, or they aren't the fathers of the children and they are. And it's been, a, a lo- it's messed up a lot of people's lives. So just make sure that if you or your significant other has taken a paternity test using her blood, and not the cells outside of uh, the fetus, which is the way, the normal way to do it. Um, but any method that's just like, oh, we can we can just take a sample of your blood and find out who the father is. Make sure that that was not subcontract subcontracted out to this company. What's the company called again? Because you know I gotta check these kids or not. <laughs> Health. As much as, as much as they cost me, I need to know. Health the Genetics Center. So just make sure the paternity test that comes out once the child is out and you can take the child's blood, that's much more uh, accurate. Um, so just try to find an accredited lab um, that can do that for you. Keelan, oh. Keelan looks too much like me, actually. I've never, you know, like some people, like in the back of their mind, they always be like, is this my kid? Like some people just, you just have that in you. No. And then, like, he looks so much like me now and acts so much like me. I'd be like, ah, this is my. I couldn't yeah. get out of here if I wanted to. Kendrick looks just like Cotty, but <laughs> by that time, I was like, yeah, but she, she didn't have time to cheat. So <laughs> that one's mine, too. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> Man, that's so, messed up. That, have you heard uh, any, like, documented cases, like, of, like, specific lives of destroyed? Yeah, there was a BuzzFeed story about it. Apparently, they had taken the uh, a reporter who's been working on the story for about 10 years. They sued him for libel, but the judge recently just said that, no, he's telling the truth. This is not libel. And so that's why it hasn't really been out before this, but they've been messing up for over a decade now. So that's a cool game, man. Yeah. I couldn't imagine. Like, as much as I'm attached to my kids and somebody just be like, they're not yours, I'd be like, oh. 
I'm like I'm so invested. Do do? I'm so att- I don't know, but I'm so attached to them, and I'm so invested. And I just be like, that would suck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, that would really That's suck. devastating. Yeah. Yeah, especially all the years y'all put in. And mm-hmm. like, I wouldn't even the 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 fact that you slept with somebody else would honestly be like I would be so devastated over the kids. I'd have to address mm-hmm. that later. Yeah, like, these kids ain't mine. Like these, right? I, I I couldn't even process the other thing yet. Double check if you've gotten a paternity test. Double check. They say it's however much accurate, but you really got to check their methods. Make sure they're an accredited lab. Make sure they're approved and they're not just this, you know, fly by night promising things that people really can't promise. Sometimes scientists lie and they say they can do stuff that they can't do. Oh, see, see? What I'm talking about. <laughs> there it is again. Vaccines, man. This is why <laughs> this is they, be fumbling, they be fumbling in the lab, man. <laughs> Every, everything comes back to the mistrust. Every time. Man. That's why I'm out here like a scared deer, like vaccines, huh? I'm in the bushes looking. Like, mm, nah. <laughs> Cautious McGee out here. Tony, have the kids, uh, have you been uh, talking to the kids? Like, I feel like I, I've seen your son now twice, you mm-hmm. know, down at the bunker. And every time I'd be like, look at Tony's kids. <laughs> down here working. <laughs> Right. I mean, I mean, it's so hard when I run into your kids. It's hard for me not to hit them with the old person. Like, I remember when you, because <laughs> like, he's so tall now. And I remember when they were like small. Yeah, man. And I'd be like, man, this dude is a full grown man editing my stuff. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, it's just like, it's That's crazy. Dope. It's crazy, bro. It, when, whenever we hang it, like last, a few, what was it? Thursday, Thursday or Friday, we went hiking. And I was just like, these are my kids I'm hiking with. Like, you know, I'm in the back. They just fully realize, I'm like, this is crazy. Talking about, you know, Serene talking about getting a car and like, you know, Cecile was talking about, we were just talking about the most expensive house in San Francisco and like just this regular conversation. It was yeah. just like. Yeah, grown yeah. kids. Cause I, I, was, I went, um, I had to get Keelan some shoes. Cause he, you know, the kids be tearing their shoes up. And he, he outgrew him. I didn't really like. I measured him. He didn't. He, he now he's projected. Remember, we, he, he was projected to be like five eight. Mm-hmm. And I was and I was like, man, I'm done. <laughs> and then now he's projected to be, you know, like six foot and over. He's like he's taller. He's just getting tall. And like his shoes. So I went to the store to get him some stuff. And then, um, you know, I end up just you know going a little bit. I was like, well, he he could have this, and he could, I just kept grabbing stuff. But I had to catch myself like I'm in the boy section. I'm not in the toddler section no more. You know what I mean? I'm in the boy section. And I picked up this shirt and I just I was just in the mo- I just had a moment in the middle of the store. I was just yeah. like, oh, my kid is Man. It's getting so old. Like <laughs> you know, he's gonna be leaving me soon. <laughs> mm-hmm. Pretty soon you're gonna be shopping by yourself. All right. <laughs> for yourself, texting your kids and getting ignored while you're in the pants section. Right. Or like I was like, I got I got a few <laughs> I, was like, I got a few more years before he doesn't want me to he'd be like, Dad, just give me the money. Like I don't need you to come. I don't want you to pick out my stuff. I don't because I'm still in the phase now and like when I get him some, his whole thing is like I come in the house with bags, he'd be like, Is that for me? I'd be like, yeah, I got y'all something. He'd be like, okay, you, uh, do I need to close my eyes? Like, he's big on a surprise. And I take it. What, what, what's so dope is like, it doesn't really matter what it is. When I take it out, he'd be like, oh, man. Just because it's for him. And it's a surprise. And he want to close his eyes. He'd go put it on. He'd be like, mom, look what dad got. Blah, blah. And then I'd be, I'd be trying to tell him, though, just because Cotty doesn't go out, especially since this whole thing, like, I run all the errands and everything. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I'd be trying to tell him, like, no, this is from me and mom. Because in his mind, I bought him everything that he owns. Like, everything, the house. The, he's like, my dad got this. I'd be like, no, me and your mom got it. I just went to go get it. So, because he'd be giving me the credit for everything. And I'd be like, no, nah, I just I just happened to go to the store. Man. <laughs> <laughs> That's dope, man, the excitement. He'd be pumped. Like, yeah, all right. <laughs> Hey, Tony, what age were uh, your sons when they made that transition from being like Keon's kids to like, like you said, not really texting back and stuff like that? I would say like uh, probably early high school. Like, you know, uh, that's that's when they got a little bit more, you know, 
into the friends and the, you know, but it was always about the friend life, but it was just like, you know, the non-texting back and stuff like that. High school, as they progress in high school, it's just like, all right, they get more and more independent. And it's like, all right, you know, even now, like, you know, I got to get on Serene about the follow-up information. Like, he'll call me and be like, yo, yo dad, what do you think I should do about this, this, and the third? You think the bank is open? Should I cash my check? I'll be like, I'll tell them what to do. And then I'll be like, let me know what happened. Oh, no. The no, the no follow up. <laughs> once, once they get everything handled on that end, the follow up be trash. I'll be yeah. like, well, so, so what happened? Oh yeah, I got it done. <laughs> Let me know that you got it done, that it went smoothly, like you know, stuff like that. And I get it because I would do it <laughs> to my parents. I'm like, hey, ma, what? Is, this that, and the third, and then she'll show me the ropes. And I'm like, cool, cool. And then <laughs> you just go on about your day, and then your mom be like, so what happened? Oh yeah, I got it done. And then, so, thanks for telling me. So it's all a circle, you know what I mean? So yeah. do you be wanting to been, know, sorry, do you be wanting to know why like the follow-up just to know if your advice worked or whatever, or like what's the reason to want to know? Uh, it's uh, it's a combination of that. It's it's a combination of did you get everything that you needed? Like, you know, yeah, let me know if you need anything else. Did my advice work? Were they open? It's like you come in because they they bring me in to the, to what's going on to the situation. I want to know how the situation ended. Like you know what I'm saying? Like what happened? What ended up happening? And so and people do that all the time. Even beyond kids, they they bring you in like yo, I got I got to get this done, and then they don't let you know how everything turned out. And you like you invested at this point. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what happened? You know? And so um, so it'd be it'd be a combination of those things. And like with the situation now, like, you know, Serene's car has been tripping. So I was like, what was the follow up? Cause he had asked me about some car stuff. And then he was like, oh, and then he called me yesterday and told me everything that was going on. So I'm like, all right, cool, cool. So and even stuff with his job, he had to get a, a fingerprint. He had to get some fingerprints done. This job he applied for. And I was like, all right, keep me posted. Let me know what happened. And then, <laughs> That's yeah, too much so information. So it's like, uh, let me know, you know. Uh, that way I know, you know, what's going on, what they're going through, and like, you know, stuff like that. But <laughs> usually if, if you don't hear anything, usually they're good. It's like the yeah. doctor's office. Like, if they don't call you back, all your yeah, tests are no what's, what's it saying? No no news is good news? Yeah. So. But so Dad, I'm like going that. in for this job. You don't hear nothing. Next thing you know, uh, here, uh. I didn't make a million dollars. Oh, okay. I've been over here for six <laughs> months. Yeah. Oh, all right. Give me the, give me what you owe. Give me what you owe. <laughs> but that's what they told me about my COVID test. They're like, oh, if you don't hear anything from us, then you're fine. But it's like, I want to hear something. Yeah, yeah that's, that's yeah. a little different. Yeah. I'm like, nah, I'm calling. Wait, so they wasn't going to tell you? No, nah, no. They told me like, oh, if you don't hear anything from us in 24 hours, you're fine. So I waited 24 uh -huh. hours. I didn't hear anything. And so I'm calling like every day, like, hey, what's up? And then we're just playing phone tag, missing each other. And then finally they told me a few days later. So it was just, you know, it's been messed That's up. That's not cool. Cause yeah. you could have yeah. It's not cool at all. No, it's yeah. isolated. Like, but yeah, you're right. I could have went out, could have mm -hmm. did a bunch of stuff, but. And you're like, it's been 24 hours. I'm fine. Exactly. That's not, yeah. that's not okay. Yeah. They got to get that together. Yeah. But again, they will fast track you. That and the doctors and the government. <laughs> the fumbles, man. The fumbles. Every time. Bill Gates. That's crucial, man. Bill Gates. I just, I just imagine like they were trying to get the call, but Bill was like, let it ring. <laughs> let it ring. I need more tests. What do you do with Bill Gates level money? Like, what, what do you do? Me probably knowing me, still not spend it. Probably, <laughs> spend it. yo, Keon was Why? still cheap <laughs> and he was worth billions. I would just cut him off. I would like, <laughs> he's still haggling over sixty dollars <laughs> worth eighty billion. <laughs> but I would still, I would still be like. Why are you charging this much for this? If it's like a ridiculous price, even though I can afford it, 
I'm like, why are you charging two thousand dollars for this pair of pants? This is ridiculous. Because I won't see, you know. But I will say, pants. we were talking about that over the weekend. We were saying how, like, uh, you know, you complain about expensive stuff, and then when you actually experience expensive stuff, most times you'd be like, I get it. Like, well, I don't care if it's things such as bed sheets or, you know, clothing or whatever. When you sleep on them really fine sheets, you'd be like, oh, okay. And then it's hard to go back to the regular stuff after you didn't have something real nice. It's, ha- it's hard. Yeah. If you, or if you didn't put on, like, I, like, I never understood how, uh, like, celebrities could wear suits all the time. I'm like, suits are uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Like, I never, and then... I, I sp- tried on this really expensive shirt, and I was like, this feels like sweats. This is, this is why they can do it. Their suits ain't like my suits that I'm getting from Burlington. They're getting custom-fitted, really nice, and it don't feel like the itchy same stuff that we wear. They wearing the finest of things. And they're like, no, this is, I can do this all day. Yeah. Bill Gates dresses like a college kid, though. Oh, this is a wardrobe. Oh, yeah. trash. He don't care. Yeah, it's trash. He don't care. Straight trash. <laughs> but we, we we might think that his his regular black t-shirt might be a five hundred dollar black t-shirt <laughs> that's woven together by babies. You know, we don't know. We don't know what he what he's doing. He wear him and Zuckerberg, they just they never changed from the time they started the company till now. They wear the same outfit, I'm convinced. <laughs> <laughs> that's because that's because honestly, I just feel like they they, they just never cared about. Yeah, they just never cared. They were all about tech and like you know, yeah. doing stuff, and then that they still into that. But the the, the clothes they don't care. I remember uh, Michelle Obama used to talk about how raggedy like Barack's shoes were. He just didn't care. He just like <laughs> I'm thinking about the bigger picture. You know what I'm saying? And so uh, respect Barack. Yeah. Where it says Asics because they're comfortable and they're not. Oh, I, I, does he wear Asics? I don't he know. Wear Asics? I don't know. I don't if, know. I knew, <laughs> honestly, if I knew that Barack wore Asics, I wouldn't have voted for him. If I knew no. that, I wouldn't no. have voted for him. If That's how he's never wore Asics. In my life. Never That's how he's either. getting places. Me and Tahir are on the Asics game, and we're not rolling our ankles in Asics either. People out here. But it, at least to hear kind of goes semi stylish with the Asics. Yeah. Your Asics I is don't pure trash. Care. I couldn't care. I get the most comfortable ones. I get the parkour Asics in case I got to do something. Asics? Yeah, there's the number one parkour shoe. Is this Asics? I got well, What buildings are you jumping off, Mike? I don't know where what's going to happen. have to be that ugly. Like, I don't where, know what's going to happen. You doing? ready to go. I'm ready to go. I don't know. I don't know how things are going to go down, especially with things are going on in 2020. I might need to be jumping off of buildings tomorrow. Maya gets the middle-aged white man aces. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly. It doesn't care about his, what he's wearing. He At just all. be out there watering the grass <laughs> in his ASICs feet close together. Yeah, because like, you, can't, you can't throw it to here. To here is a very fashionable guy. You can't right. throw it to here in with you. His ASICs, he's using for a reason. Or you just be like, oh, these fit. Because I got to work out. <laughs> People you go have at them nearby? Home. I, you have yeah. them nearby? Shoot. <laughs> but like you don't have <laughs> I have workout shoes and regular shoes. I don't wear my workout shoes with my regular outfit. No. Yeah. Can't. No. I work out. My workout shoes are ugly. Well, my Nikes are fire. They're like these lime green. Those, runners are like I have so okay. I have those, but I only work out in them. I don't wear them with my clothes. But I work out a while. Every time you see me, I'm either going to or from a workout. I, I, will admit, I, change. I will admit, I don't really see Maya with the ASICs when she's wearing a regular out and about social outfit. It's yeah. usually when she just roll into the bunk or whatever, oh, you got the ASICs on, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but. <laughs> just see them? Oh, the ASICs again. The ASICs again. Like the, the, the <laughs> shoes I work out in now, the, the Adidas, uh, whatever they are, the uh, I just wear those for like travel and workout. When I'm on stage, I would never wear those, even though they're mad comfortable. But yeah. I don't even wear my workout shoes for travel. Like I have two pair of workout shoes that I only work out in, and then I have travel running shoes that are more fashionable, and then I have my, you know, high tops and stuff that I wear like on stage. But I have like mm-hmm. shoes for each activity yeah. that I'm doing. 
You get it. Like gotcha. the middle, the middle aged white guy, he was like, I'm getting one shoe, actually two <laughs> shoes of the two? same kind, and they just go with everything. And I'm like, no. Yeah. Yep. They might have some hard bottoms and then, but them sneakers. Yeah, they just the same. When I worked at Big Five, we saw we sold more New Balance and Asics than anything. Cause them white dudes would be like, I need two pair, size 10, all white, New Balance yeah. Asics, and this is just what I'm doing. I don't care. Because they're married. Once you're like off I'm the married. market, you don't, well, in my opinion, once I'm off the market, I'm like, duh, don't need to be looking at me like that. Like, that's all I right. Think, I think they just never cared. For yeah, those they just men. never cared. They just have never had yeah. a fashion sense or anything. They just don't. Yeah, they just don't know. They don't know. They be like, you know. And then the women they're with, they probably ain't never been like, why are you wearing the, you know? Because yeah, yeah. some women won't allow it. Some women won't stand for it. It's like, look, I got you some shoes. Yeah. Look at this. And then, because <laughs> some, some women actually, you know, make men better on the fashion tip. Yeah. If they stand their ground and be like, I'm sick of you wearing these new balance. We're going to get you something else. Yep. Um, like a lot of dudes, they women pick out their outfits. She got tired of me. Like, not so much in what we do because fashion is kind of a part of our job. But, like, on the regular meal, dude be like, yeah, she got tired of me wearing my same shirt. So she went, yeah. she went and bought me a bunch of shirts. <laughs> mm. I'm, I'm fine. Most dudes is like, I'm fine, you know. Especially, like, let's be honest, when it comes to fashion, black people care more about fashion than the mm. average white dude. The average white dude be like, 100%. especially a middle-aged white dude, he's like, I, I mean, give 100%. me the khakis and the Asics in this shirt that I'm going to tuck in, maybe under the gut, maybe over the gut. I don't know yet. You know, and he's just like, I'm rolling out. That's the Bill Gates look. <laughs> Bill Gates, man. I God hate the tucked in yeah. shirt with the gut, though. Oh, man. Just had a shirt with open. Yeah, if you don't tuck in the gut with the... It, uh. <laughs> <laughs> the gut tuck in. And then, like, a lot of dudes, like, I would rather, if you're going to tuck the gut, tuck the gut in your pants. I hate when the dudes be thinking they have the small waist, but the gut's hanging over with the tuck in. I'd be like, come on, man. You just letting this flop all around all over the place? Just tuck it in your pants, I guess. Out here. How many shoes you got, Doc Brown? Uh, about, <laughs> about 25, 30 pair. See? Black dudes, man. Yeah, even, yeah. even on the even on the physician tip, yeah, he all about medicine. He like, man, I got to get the shoes as well. <laughs> got to, have to, got to get the shoes and match the fit every time. Yeah. Have to, every time, every time. My I haven't time. done, I haven't done a head count yet. I haven't done a head count in a while, um, but it's probably something ridiculous for me. Yeah. Uh, just on the Jordans alone, I got. I'm approaching fifteen. Oh, that's good. On the Jordan One. Yeah, that's just the Jordan One. So the rest of the closet. And I'm I've never owned- looking at like seven pair just in the living room. No, no. It's ridiculous. I've never owned a pair of Jordan Ones. I've always wanted to. Man, I've been addicted to them lately. And I, I didn't care about Jordans until recently. Oh, I really like these. The Jordan Ones is a good fashion shoe like it's a very good mm-hmm. shoe to go with your outfit like all jays people be wearing jays because they jays but they don't all look good in clothes like with jeans mm-hmm. right but, but the jordan ones it is a dope regular clothes shoe yeah you can do shorts or pants with yeah. jordan ones and they they work my yeah, oldest man. brother uh he has a bun had a bunch of jordans and when he was ready to buy his first house he was just under 30 he cashed them all in and that was a down payment for his house. Wow. So I respect I respect the shoe game if you are like what you just described your brother. If you are using this as a he did he took something that some people will consider irresponsible and did something super responsible with it. Like I respect that. Yep. But if people who just be sneakerheads but it's <laughs> like you struggling or you waiting in line but you ain't even paid your car or like stuff yeah. that's what I'd be like trash, yeah. Because I never judge yeah. people's purchases. I judge, you know, your priorities. Right. I don't care what you're spending your money on, but, like, have your business together before you start doing frivolous things. That's when I get irritated. Like, people who call me cheap, I'm like, I do spend on stupid stuff, but it's after all the stuff that I need to take care of is taken care of. Right. Yep. Yep. And Absolutely. That's when, I, that's when the judgment comes in, when you lose with your money and your stuff ain't taken care of. Like, I got this new Beamer. 
but you live in a one bedroom with three other dudes. Like, what are you, <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. You shouldn't have a super expensive car. You got to have roommates. It's like, yeah, what you- <laughs> that doesn't match. <laughs> What you doing, man? <laughs> That's all it is out here. Man. Yeah. Do we have time for one question? We do. Let's get it. Okay. Do it. Sierra Bell asks, any thoughts on kids calling their parents by their first name? Kids calling their parents by their first name? Nah. Uh, I don't fly with me. It, uh, I never did it. Yeah. Um, my household, mom, dad. We're accepting answers. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> I still don't. Like, yep. Dad, hey, daddy. When my dad called me, I'm like, hey, daddy. <laughs> Ma, I did, I did start calling my mom uh, Nana sometimes because we were so used to the grandkids. We were all under one roof, so I started calling her Nana. Mm-hmm. Instead of, but then I went back to Ma. But I've never been like, Sandy. Sandra, yeah. you know what I mean? Yep. Like it's, it's not even, and it's not like, if there had to be a discussion about it. You ain't gonna be calling me by my first name. I yeah. just never even thought about doing it. That's just not. It just doesn't. I saw not, no purpose. Not, yeah. Yeah. I don't even let my kids call other adults by their first name unless is a Mister or Miss in front of it. So I ask, like I ask my friends, what would you like to be called? Because I'm not allowing my child to address an adult by their first name. Like I'm, I'm mm-hmm. just. So I'd be like, what? Because I know we live in an age now too where people. You're like in our minds, we're still younger, you know. So we'd be like, oh, "Don't call me Mister Holy. That's weird." You know, what I mean? <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, some people ain't feeling that. So I'm like, "Do you want a nickname or something?" But they, they the respect factor, I still am old school with that. On the like, you're not gonna. That's not your peer. Like you're not gonna yeah. just talk to them like that's your peer. So, like I think I think they call like uh, Charlie Wilson Mister Wills because mm-hmm. he didn't want to be Mister Charlie. And I get it. <laughs> I get it. So they call him Mr. Wills, and I think Ron, they say, like, Mr. G or something, or something like that. I forgot what it is. Like, and if it's close, I'd be like, well, just call him uncle or auntie, whatever. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But yep. if it's close, close friends and family. But the first, just the first name, I'd be like, nah, that ain't, I, can't, I can't do it. Yep. Never have a sign of respect. Yeah. Never wanted to. Nothing. I never wanted to. I nah. never had the desire to be like, Philip. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? You know what I'm saying? I've never had that desire. Like, I'm a grown I'm adult not. now, and I still won't call an adult by their first name. Like, if Tony's mom comments on my stuff, I'd be like, oh, hey, Miss Sandy. Like, I don't, mm-hmm. I'm not just going to call her by her name. Like, yeah. Yeah. and I met her as a full grown adult, <laughs> and I just, I can't do it. Right. It's reverence. Yeah. yeah. I got to say, I had the one friend that I had that did call their parents by their first name did not turn out too well in the end. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not going to say that it's connected or whatever. I just know that I had the one friend that would call their parents by their first name, and now she is not in a very good state. Mm, so you that, kids. You call people by your first name, you end up on meth. That is just what happens. <laughs> You go down a dark path if you calling your parents by their government name. <laughs> Drugs is next. The second you be like, I'm sick of it, Sarah. No, the minute you call your mom Sarah, drugs is next. As soon as you leave the house. Drugs. Bye, Sarah. And then you just slip and fall heroin. on a needle. You trip on the stairs, heroin. fall on a needle. <laughs> now you're in the streets doing prostitution, all because you oh. called your mom by her first name. That's just what happens. Mm-hmm. Every you time you left the porch yet. <laughs> fully addicted to crack. <laughs> I'm going to school, Philip. Crack addict. Soon you hit the mailbox. Don't do it. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> I'm gonna get you up into conclusions there. It. It's not worth hey. it. You know what I'm saying? Why risk it? I'm just Why? saying. That's all I know. <laughs> From experience, that's all I can say. Like, because it's weird, like, you know, my kids call me, they went from dad, they still call me dad or pops. And that's, that's what it is, you know, all the time. And so they call, you know, my mom, Nana, you know, they call their mom, mom. It's just, it's what it is. Hey, my battery already low? Hey, all right. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> my laptop ain't got no stamina on the battery. Yeah, chip, man. I leave. I leave this one just plugged in because I'm like, it's gonna. I leave it plugged in. Really. Man, it's like, ugh, it's ten percent. Anyway, Doc Brown, man, uh, 
Thanks for coming once again. Yeah, appreciate uh, it. I'm glad you have you, you back, back, brother, man. I'm man, I'm glad. I never, knew, I never knew what you was going through out here, man. My bad. I wasn't publicizing it, but I appreciate I this platform and sharing yeah. this and everything. And, you I'm know, always you appreciate here. it. Thank Doc you. Brown, hey. before we go, you have an event on the 19th. Can you tell us about yes. it a little bit? Um, you better not be you. live. You go to this event? <laughs> like, yeah. So I'll be off quarantine by July 10th, so I'll be good by then. Um, but you going July, to the event? On July 19th. July 19th. So with a mask, I'll with a mask, mask. he's wearing his collar. He's wearing his face collar. Everything, you know what I mean. He's doing what he gotta do. Be geared up, PPE. I'm showing up. up with the Iron Man helmet at that point. <laughs> All right. But yeah, July 19th in um, Crenshaw at the Center of Hope Church in Los Angeles. Myself and four other individuals, we started this project called the Ujima Project, and basically it's aimed at um, uplifting communities of color. Um, physically, financially, socially, and then I can send you the flyer, um, I, and if you would like, broadcast, we're asking for volunteers. Um, we'll have masks, we'll have gloves, we'll have uh, trash uh, bags, we'll have the uh, claw things that pick up trash, um, we'll have refreshments, we'll have all those things. Provided. Refreshments? So feel free to come out. <laughs> to, yeah, refreshments, yeah. <laughs> I, you know what I don't like? I don't like it. As soon as he said people of color, his internet started tripping up. You saw that? I thought it was just mine, so I was just like. As soon as he said, we, it's to help people of color, the internet was like, eh, 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 and I was like, the government. Bill Gates right now is listening to this, and it's like, <laughs> it shut, it shut it down. Shut it down. It all comes back to the no trust, man. <laughs> you didn't get your vaccine, your internet going to slow down. All right. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to share that. We'll put a link and we'll put it on the yeah. Daddy Issues, uh, Daddy Issues Real Instagram page so people can help out in any way yeah. that they can. We'll That's Thank dope. You. Thank you. Appreciate it. Dope. So we're gonna have you back, so be ready. For yeah. sure. We'll be here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate y'all. Y'all stay safe out there too. Mask up, do all everything you can. Cause this Rona ain't no joke. Rona's out here. It's out here. It's out here. Oh. Um, you can find me everywhere. Tony Baker comedy on it. Well, no, Tony Baker now it's Tony Baker now yeah. on uh, Facebook and Instagram. Uh, but Tony Baker comedy is still a brand, still a website. Uh, I got nothing coming up. You can find me on Twitch, Tony Baker comedy, and uh, you can get my ringtone. Skip that, didn't it? D uh, on iTunes or Tunes. Skip that, you gotta it. Skip that, didn't it? D. And I just realized <laughs> the people want more uh, different ringtones, so. You got to do all the catchphrases. All of them now, man. I'm like, all right, don't promise me. You know what's funny about Tony's catchphrases is that <laughs> you guys are always behind. Like, the fans get them late. We get them first in the chat. But the, it's so funny because we, like, Tony's our friend. So it's like we don't have the same reactions that other people have to his stuff. Like, I remember when he first started staying lavish, I think it was Chaz. Chaz was like, shut your ass up, man. We don't <laughs> care. <laughs> And then he started saying on the internet and it became like one of his biggest things. But in the chat, we was like, we all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and I just love seeing like his stuff. Like when he first said, I never knew on stage, he was like, yo, that's going to blow up. You said that flappers. And we was mm -hmm. like, yo, keep that. That's going to blow up. And then sure enough, people, I never knew. <laughs> and I was like, it's like, what? <laughs> it's like the squad chat is like your family members. Your family members don't give you nothing. They be like, yeah, yeah whatever, yeah, whatever. We sick of you talking. And then when you go out into the public, they be like, yo, what you said was, hey, tell that to my family. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I feel about it. You just that's how I feel about comedy. Yeah. Cause my older brothers never laughed at nothing. So it was just like, and then I was like, oh, I'm funny. Cause at home I'm nothing. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> it's like that in the group chat. <laughs> I'm, but yeah, man. That's what's up. Oh, all right. Uh Keon, what, what you got going? Uh Keon Poli on everything. Um, subscribe to my YouTube. I uh I got a show coming out. Uh it's gonna be really good. Um, all your favorite comedians will be on it uh throughout the episodes. Um we shot the first four yesterday. It was really, it was really good. And so subscribe to my YouTube page because that's where it's coming out on. And uh yeah, that's it. Other than that, same old, same old. Oh, dope. All right, guys. Check it out, definitely. All right. Thank you, Maya, for holding this down. And always. 
as of usual. Course, happy. We are. While is trash. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Stop recording. <laughs>